Texas possesses an abundance of outstanding recreational resources, many of which have been utilized for park purposes. The Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is the state agency responsible for the administration of a number of these parks, which comprise the Texas State Park System. In carrying out this responsibility, the department utilizes several different park classifications to perform three major functions. One of these is providing outdoor recreation, which is primarily carried out through three park classifications, state parks, state recreation areas, and state fishing piers. Another major function is historic preservation, which is carried out at state historical parks, state historic sites, and state historic structures. Another major function, natural area conservation, utilizes two park classifications, state natural areas and state parks. State parks not only provide outdoor recreation, but also often contain outstanding natural resources. Keeping these various park classifications and their roles in mind should be helpful as we begin a tour of some of the parks of the Texas State Park System. Let's begin at the top, in this case, at the top of Texas, with a park resource which has its origins early in time. Here in the northernmost part of the state, the Texas Panhandle, is Palo Duro Canyon State Park. Today, it is as well known for the summer musical Texas, staged by the Texas Panhandle Heritage Foundation, as it is for the breathtaking beauty of the canyon walls, which provide the backdrop for this lively production about the settling of our state. For all of its many colors and remarkable formations, the canyon is also impressive for its age about one million years old. And the fact that it exposes rocks which span about two million years of geological time, all of this the result of erosion caused through tens of thousands of centuries by wind and water. It was also in this area that the first commercial cattle ranch in the Texas Panhandle was begun by Colonel Charles Goodnight. This is an example of the type of dugout he may have used early in the settlement. Amid all the historical interest and timeless beauty of Palo Duro Canyon are many recreational facilities and activities for park visitors. In addition to recreation, the state park system provides the means to preserve and protect some of the more outstanding natural resources in Texas through state parks and state natural areas. From the Panhandle to the Gulf, the state park system seeks to maintain these areas in their natural state for generations of Texans to come. Due to their very nature, portions of some parks are often fragile. In order to retain the space, solitude, and natural beauty of such parks, the level of recreational use is carefully controlled when necessary.
There's a special sort of quiet recreation to be enjoyed at many parks. The outdoor experiences found along a winding nature trail. Birds and other wild creatures, plants and native vegetation are here to be viewed in the wild. On the southernmost tip of the state is the Benson Rio Grande Valley State Park. This park is an excellent example of one of the few remaining tracks of lower Rio Grande Valley brush. The principal attractions of the park are the plants, animals, and birds. Many species of birds unique to the southern United States are found here. Grandeur of Far West Texas is the setting for Davis Mountain State Park and the popular Indian Lodge, offering overnight visitors quaint and modern conveniences. to the lodge, camping and day use facilities are also available in the park. Parks which are classified as state parks generally are spacious areas of outstanding natural or scenic character, selectively developed to provide opportunities for compatible types of resource-oriented recreation. Typical hill country ranch land is seen at Pertinalis Falls State Park, a dozen miles east of Johnson City. The Pertinalis River cascades through a boulder-strewn gorge to a wide pool, which can be viewed from a lookout high above. The usual park facilities are available. Pertinalis Falls also offers primitive camping for the backpackers who wish to seek out the natural beauty of the nearly 5,000 acre park. This undisturbed land has many remote areas which are most easily reached by park rangers on horseback. Each park is unique and different from every other, but almost all of them have camping facilities of various kinds. Public demand for these facilities, especially during the peak holiday and vacation periods, is quite high. Some parks have cabins, many have screen shelters, and others have lodge or special overnight accommodations. Visitors who come to spend the day find many types of recreational opportunities, including one of the favorite, picnicking. Natural swimming areas exist in many state parks. Other parks have swimming pools.
some of our parks, there are facilities for larger groups, which could even include big family reunions. Throughout the Texas State Park system, there are many conveniences for a more enjoyable visit, such as grocery stores, boat ramps, and showers. For general information about parks, contact the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Austin, Texas. For current conditions in a particular park, contact the park headquarters. You'd expect many of the Texas state parks to be unique unto themselves when it comes to having fun. One of the most unusual is Monahan Sandhill State Park in West Texas. Here, the sand dunes are as high as 90 feet and 500 miles from the nearest beach, the Gulf of Mexico. Sand surfing is how they hang tin out on the prairies. Contrasting Texas landscapes also provide the settings for the colorful events which make up the history of our state. In order to preserve those areas which are rich in historical significance, the Parks and Wildlife Department has incorporated many such sites into the state park system in the form of state historical areas. State historical areas are a general grouping of those park units established for the preservation and interpretation of prehistoric and historic resources. Included in the grouping are state historical parks, state historic sites, and state historic structures. In many of our historic areas, interpretation is used to give visitors a more vivid picture of the past and to illustrate our common heritage. Here in Seminole Canyon on the Rio Grande, some of the original Texans made their mark. Nomadic Indian tribes making periodic stops here left primitive pictographs on the canyon walls. Texas history came the missionaries, seeking not to conquer, but to convert. The missionaries who brought their faith to this desolate and lonely land left enduring monuments behind.
American colonization of Texas began under the Spanish and flourished under Mexico. But dissension grew, dividing the tough, free-spirited Texans from the Mexican government. The result was revolution. Through the independence parks like the San Jacinto Battleground, Goliad, and Washington on the Brazos, we can see and touch the places where men like Sam Houston, William Travis, and James Fannin learned the price of freedom and paid for it. reaches of Texas were not settled without a struggle. A string of forts was erected to protect the early Texas settlers from the Indians who regarded the white man as an intruder. Some are still standing today. Others are little more than ruins. All serve as a reminder of the pioneer spirit that makes our state. system also includes historic structures like the Port Isabel Lighthouse. Built in 1852, it is still a valuable navigation aid on the coast today. The Varner Hog Plantation was established in the early 1800s by Martin Varner and later was the home of Governor James S. Hogg. The completely furnished plantation manor gives a graphic picture of colonial life in Texas. birthplace of Dwight D. Eisenhower, 34th President of the United States, is located in Denison. It is now a museum and historic site. Former President Lyndon B. Johnson was not only born in Texas, he grew up in the hill country. Inside the park dedicated in his honor, visitors can find an interpretive center, auditorium, amphitheater, nature trails, and many other day-use facilities. A fascinating form of living history, the Sauer Beckman Homestead, completely restored and operational, is also located within the park. Here, park employees in period dress carry out the day-to-day -day activities of life on the farm at the turn of the century. Though we learn from the past, there are many things history cannot tell us. One such mystery surrounds the Bastrop State Park, site of the famous Lost Pines. This isolated section of timber in central Texas is far removed from the piney woods of East Texas. This unique resource provides a natural setting for a variety of outdoor recreational activities. Ancient Indian superstition haunts Caddo Lake State Park in far northeast Texas. The park is located on Big Cypress Bayou, which flows into Caddo Lake. Caddo Indian legend attributes the formation of the lake itself to supernatural origins. And the mysterious beauty of the Caddo area makes you believe anything is possible.
Many of the water resources possessed by Texas are man-made lakes, which often provide the base for state recreation areas. State recreation areas are relatively natural areas, usually associated with water resources, and developed to provide a variety of resource-oriented, unstructured outdoor recreation opportunities. And of course, there's the Gulf Coastal Area, Texas has 373 miles of Gulf Shore and approximately 1,419 miles of Bay Shore. Goose Island, one of several parks located on the coast, gets its name from its shape, that of a goose in flight. Here, visitors can swim, fish, or merely contemplate the beauty of the ocean. Approximately 150 miles up the Texas coast is Galveston Island State Park. The park preserves one of the few remaining undeveloped marsh areas on West Galveston Bay. It also provides the park visitor access to the Gulf of Mexico as well as Galveston Bay. Park facilities include shade shelters for both camping and picnicking. An elevated boardwalk into the adjacent Bay Marsh allows the visitor a closer look at the teeming world of wildlife to be found there. For fishing enthusiasts, state fishing piers have been located along the coast where the opportunities arise. These are usually existing structures, such as abandoned causeways, which are converted for recreational fishing. Special fishing lights and bait stands add to the enjoyment of these unique facilities. timelessness of the ocean illustrates a major objective of the Parks and Wildlife Department. Today, our parks provide recreational facilities, preserve natural areas, and protect historical sites. And though we enjoy and learn from our parks now, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is working to ensure that these resources will be available in the future for generations of Texans to come.